All right, good evening and welcome to a very quick episode of the Cigar Box Guitar Builder. Uh, and I'm going to show you um, a very quick video on what happens when the nut on your guitar is too high. Now, I have already fixed the nut on this one, but I can basically give you an idea of what it would sound like, okay? Because people ask me sometimes, oh, why do you have a particular time period for made to order instruments? Can't you just knock them up and get them out? And um, it's true. I have people ask me that sometimes. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was a much faster kind of thing and it was just kind of knock them up, get them out of there. Well, you know, it can be. Um, but I prefer to take my time a little bit. And one of the reasons I take my time is in setup. Um, I, when I finish building a guitar, such as this one here, um, I don't just put it in a box and send it out. I basically let it sit for about a week. About a week. Three days, two week, under string tension. And what I do is I make sure that the guitar's behaving itself. I make sure that the neck is not doing anything funny. I make sure that all the glue is holding neatly and all of the screws are holding neatly. And uh, this one's still, I've still got to pop some box corners on this one. But once the box corners are on and the little knobby thing here is on, it's not going straight away. It, won't, it has to sit for just a little bit. Um, one of the reasons, as I said, is that I just like to make sure that everything's kind of working on it and working well and doing what it should do. Now, we're pretty much in tune here. Now, one of the things that um, can happen with beginner guitar builders or, and this isn't patronising, I'm not being patronising in any, in any way, shape or form. We all, you know, we all start somewhere. That's all cool. Um, but when we're building something that somebody's going to buy, we really kind of, we really want it to, to do what it should do. Is that fair enough to say? I think that's a, I think that's a fair enough statement. Um, and one of the things it should do is play in tune, especially if it's a fretted instrument, fretless instruments, you know, it's going to be, just make sure your scale length. Okay. So let's talk scale length first, really quickly. Scale length is the distance between the nut and the bridge. Now, if the bridge is in the wrong position, the further up the fretboard, the further up the fretboard you come, the more out of tune it gets. Um, really out of tune. Um, I did a, um, uh, just played a couple, I, when I finish a guitar, the first thing that usually comes to my head when I start playing is, So what you've got there is harmony notes, lots and lots of harmony notes. And, you know, and these notes, if they're not, um, if they're not in tune, they really sound horrible. So the very first thing I did when I played it was I went, Ugh! <laughs> because what happened was instead of going, which sounds very musical, the second note sounded like this. It, all right, first one. It went. That was, because that was in tune, all right? So this is the thing, it was in tune. The bridge was in the right spot. The nut's obviously in the right spot, because that's your starting, kind of your starting measurement as you go up here. But what had happened was, the, the nut, see there's these little grooves in here? All right, now if these grooves are too high, okay, in other words, if they're too high off the fretboard, what happens is when you press down, especially at the first fret and the second fret, but not as much, but the first fret definitely, when you press down at the first fret and it's too high at the nut, you're basically doing this with the string. You're stretching it. So by the time you've stretched the string down onto the fretboard, you're out of tune, okay? It's the same as, get, instead of being in tune here, it goes sharp, okay? And the reason for that, as I said, is you've got that string, here's your string, what do you do? Here's your nut and you're pushing it down. It should just go boom, like that, nice. But when you bend it too far, it's stretching the string and it automatically it'll be out of tune. And 
it's sometimes not as bad up here, but in your cowboy cord position. Forgive fresh strings. So if you want to do your, your blues shuffle, especially up here, even around here, it can still be That sounds really nice now. All right. So, yeah, when you hit that second fret, instead of it sounding like, it'll sound like. It doesn't sound like that because you're stretching it as you're pressing it down onto the fretboard. Okay. Just as importantly, down here at the 12th fret, it's exactly the same situation. So if you have a little look at, I do like, now first and foremost, I really do like when I'm playing slide. So I really do like to kind of leave just, just a little bit of meat on the bone as far as just giving it a little bit of height. So if people want to play slide, it's you're not getting too much click clacking, um, especially with like heavier slides and things like that. Uh, with, a, with a brass slide. Uh, there's less click clacking because the brass slide's not as... It's just, it's not as heavy as a ceramic slide. So if you've got lighter strings on, you gotta have a light touch. So, um, but if you're playing a, um, a fretted guitar and you've got really, really, really high action and you're trying to get your intonation right, now your intonation is knowing where to put your bridge, okay? So I'm doing this by ear because my, I don't have a, a battery. For my, I, don't, I don't have a battery for my clip-on tuner. So I'm doing it by ear. All right, so that's meant to be G, all right? Now I can hear, even if I put it out of G, if it was in G flat or if it was in G sharp or if it was whatever node, you can hear it, right? You should be able to, well, not should be able to hear. Some people can't, but that's okay. Um, I can usually hear it if it's out. Okay, so that's G. That's pretty good. So you want your... Oh, it's a tiny bit sharp. So if it's a little bit sharp, it's like it's kind of just been given a bit of a stretch. One thing to keep in mind is if your strings are really, really, really high, if your action's super high, the same thing will happen. When you press the string down onto the 12th fret, right? When you press it down onto the 12th fret, it'll be like, it'll be like stretching the string because you are stretching the string. You want to find that nice balance between simply being able to press the string down onto the fretboard or onto the fret itself and to the, getting to that point where you can feel the tension in the string. If the string's too high, so you're going to begin to stretch the string and it will go out of tune. It'll go sharp. Um, if So if it's, if it's that, you've got to lower your bridge, okay? You're going to have to lower the bridge down and find a happy medium between the, the height of the bridge for slide playing. Because I love a really, really high bridge for slide playing. Like if you could... I could almost, I wouldn't care if the strings were twice as high off the fretboard with that, because I would just dig in and just get, because I love getting in there with a slide and stretching the strings with the slide by pressing it really down. I love doing that. You get that kind of, wah, 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 that kind of effect. That's a cool thing too. But when it comes to actually wanting to stay in tune for a, for a fretted instrument, you've really got to play that nice balance between um, 
making sure that the, the, the string is not being stretched like it would sideways. Because as soon as you do that, as soon as you press down, and you really notice it. You really notice it up here in the high. That's in tune. Now watch what happens when I shorten. Okay, so I have to shorten the string tension. Okay, let's get it back to tune. So that's G again, right? That's G, we understand that that's G. Watch what happens when I do exactly the same thing. Okay, so, and if I press on that height, that fret, let's hear the octave, let's hear the, the open G on the high string. Still G or thereabouts. Remember, I'm doing this by ear. I don't have a tuner here. If I press down here on the 12th fret, it's really high. Okay, now I've got a little tiny mark on the body of the guitar just there. You might see, be able to see it at the tip of my finger, a little tiny pencil mark. And I'll just bring that back, bring the bring the bridge back a bit. I like to kind of give it a slight angle, kind of with the treble forward a little bit, the bass back a little bit, it's usually the way it goes. And what I usually do is tune the two outside strings and then I'll tune the D. So that'll be sharp. So the reason it's sharp is I was in G before, and when I pulled the pulled the the bridge back, what it did was it increased the tension on the string. Okay, so we didn't change the length of the string up here on the tuner, but what happened was as we came back here, it actually made it go higher in. Uh, actually, no, we went yeah it went higher in pitch because it was stretch because we're stretching the string. That's what we're doing down here. We're stretching it. So as soon as you stretch the string, the tone goes up. So let's have a listen. We'll see if we're in tune again now. My ear, I always go a quarter. I always have, I'm always a quarter out. I can tell. <laughs> I think that's it. Now I'm back in, okay? Now remember, as I said, doesn't matter if I'm a quarter out because if I'm just playing in pitch, I want to be in pitch, uh, in tune here, GDG here or close enough to where it is. And I want to be back to GDG here. So mm, still a bit sharp, I think. Still sharp. So I'm going to pull the bridge. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just going to bring the bridge, pushing it that way now because I want to lengthen it. And I want to make the strings longer, very slightly longer. All right, so I've just pushed it down a little bit. And again, I would have gone sharp. All right. I'm playing by ear. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm close. Just adjusting it. See, again, see, I'm just adjusting it very slightly. Just want to make sure that I'm, it's nice. I think I'm in tune and that's what happens so that's how you do your intonation it's exactly the same on one of the um, one of these guitars because I've just finished this one as well it's been a busy day at the birdwood guitar factory okay same thing with this you got these screws in the back here it's exactly the same situation you do the same thing 
Same thing with the uh, with the screws. Pull the screws back. If you're too sharp, you want to lengthen the strings. Okay. If it's too if it's too flat, all right. You strings are too long so you want to bring them back you're bringing the bridge back so this is these are the ones that have got the three individual pole um, saddles here okay same situation you, you, arguably you got better intonation with these but when you're working with an acoustic instrument with an acoustic piezo i always prefer to use a timber bridge it's just woody you know it's just acoustic it's woody it's feeling good let's have a listen with the little with the little amp. Where's my little piggy? Where's little piggy? Where is little piggy? All right, here we go. Man, I need some dinner. I think I've got a sugar low. All right, here we go. Let's, let's listen to little piggy. Little piggy knows. Here we go. Ah! All right, turn it on. See if this sucker works. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah. other subject matter but same thing on that just roll your volume down. birdwood guitars go and check out www.birdwoodguitars.com if you are building guitar let's see if we're going to buy some stuff from me if you're building guitars and you need some awesome awesome parts all of the parts on this guitar have all come from the amazing the special the brilliant people at cbgiddy.com if you want to shop from them you can help this channel and you can help yourself by going down to the description go to the affiliate link and use the affiliate link and the promo code birdwood and you will be able to get 10 percent off the price of your order and you will be able to help this fella in this shop at the same time. We get a little kickback from, from the guys at CB Giddy uh, who are sponsoring this show and the podcast. Pop on over, go to the pop, podcast provider and click in the Cigar Box Guitar Builder and you will find an awesome video, video that, whoop, awesome interview I did with uh, Del Puckett uh, with the help of Darren McDonald, my good mate. And uh, there's a whole heap of interviews there, guys, with a whole heap of awesome builders. Um, join the group, uh, subscribe to this channel, like the channel, Build a guitar! Love you all. Be good.